Meanwhile, the president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has urged government officials to give urgent attention to youth empowerment, poverty reduction, food security, and appreciable improvement in living standards of Nigerians. Speaking at a forum to critique the uh, performance of the 2021 budget provision for the agricultural sector, Senator Lawan warned against complacency towards proactive economic initiatives. He also said uh, and warned that if elected representatives fail to take agitated youths of the, off the streets, it could lead to dire consequences for the political class and that they might not escape the next NSARS uprising. And joining us to have a quick conversation about this is uh, Gide Benson, a public affairs commentator. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Benson, for your time. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, do you consider the um, statements of uh, Ahmed Lawan as a mere political statement or a serious warning that should be taken seriously? It could be a bit of both. But first of all, let me congratulate him at least for speaking up. He wants in what appears to be lending a voice to the concerns of the entire protesters and the entire Nigerian youth. Truly, there may be another round of NSAS protests. Those who would ignite it or those who initiated it is what we do not know. NSAS was merely a statement. It, it wasn't an end in itself. It was merely a means to an end. And as I said on another forum, the National Assembly enjoyed the cocoon of being, enjoyed the privilege of being in the cocoon. It was taken to their doorstep, but they, they couldn't get to their doorstep. And you saw what happened in some states. They went, the hoodlums who hijacked the protest in the latter days went to the homes of political office holders. So that's a signal that really you may hide, but you'll be found. And I do hope that they'll put action to the work that he has just yet to do. Now you just made uh, mention of action. Uh, some people might say, you know, the uh, Senate president is merely just speaking. What would you describe as the practical steps that need to be taken, apart from the ones that have already been put, put in place, to avert a second wave of protests? First of all, they should be ready to make sacrifices. One of the things that came up in, during the NSAS protest was the need to reconsider the allowances that the public office holders have received, particularly members of the National Assembly. How about they make that, what, even if it's for a form of showmanship, they make that decision to, to accept the cut in their allowances. We are told that the president accepted the cut in his allowance, him and the vice president, in the early, in the, in the early part of the administration. There's been so much talk about the allowances and remuneration received by the members of the National Assembly, so that needs to be looked into. The second thing is that the kind of lifestyle that they live, it's like a public, let the public be damned approach. There's, people are living in so much poverty, and they're looking at so much wealth and riches right across them. So those are, those are two simple steps that they can take. Beyond that is massive investment in infrastructure. Thankfully, he was talking about agriculture, and the prices of food has spiked beyond the ceiling. I was following last week the onion trajectory. I'll eat onions and I'll sell for 1,000 naira. People are hungry. People are hungry. Yes, kindly hold on. The, the things that you've spoken about will address hunger and uh, will also uh, maybe also show the government, because you spoke about the uh, reduction in the allowances of uh, some of the government um, officials. Um, but how about the place of justice and the reason behind the NSAS protests in the first place? Uh, the, the protests didn't start because a government high you know, salaries and allowances. So, so can, what do you think you know, the government has done, or how well do you think the government has done in giving justice to these aggrieved personality and persons in society and the young people in society? Um, we still haven't heard much about arrest of, you know, any of these policemen who have been accused of crimes. Will that also maybe help? All right, if anything, I think that the government is perpetuating injustice. 
Because if you said you've heard the voices of the young people and they are the leaders of tomorrow, I mean, they used to not do that anymore. We're leaders of today. I mean, I listened to the first portion of your news where the president was saying that his generation is in his last lap. I completely disagree with that because there are still 70-year-old people who are interested in holding political offices. And what happened in America last week is going to be, is going to be emboldening them to say that if America can do it, they can also do it there. Well, that's aside the point. The government is perpetrating injustice. If there's anything to bother that is the fact that they are, they are counts of the best to have been um, leading light in the NSAS protest. So on the one hand, you are saying that their, their grievances are valid and they are looking and they are looking into it. And on another hand, you are, you are frustrating them. So it appears to be government promoting injustice and trying to repress the voice, the voices of the people. Is, is, is there a fear, and, and should the government also have the fear that that might backfire? Or do they see it in a different way that, you know, from the rest of the country? The government shouldn't be concerned about it backfiring if they do what they're supposed to do. The president is hibernating in, in the villa in Abuja. He's sending his chief of staff to embark on a road trip or a road show, if you like. People didn't vote for the chief of staff. He's relatively unknown. There's something about seeing the leader. There's a bit of emotional intelligence in that. Even if he's not going to visit everybody, he should visit a few of the people who have been, who have been victims of past. He should even visit police formation because there were casualties on either side, on the part of the protesters, on the part of the police. Even the police need a moral booster. NSAS ultimately, ultimately, I've said this time and again, will benefit the police because they are suffering. Their welfare is terrible. They're, they work in conditions that are subhuman. So while people were protesting NSAS, they were actually protesting for the benefit of the Nigerian police. Um, lastly, before we let you go, I want you to quickly also share your thoughts on the... Uh uh, 75 billion Naira youth fund that the government is releasing. Um, how do you think that should be channeled and, you know, what would that really also solve? All right. So there's a, there's a space of the National Orientation Agency and the Ministry of Information. Thankfully, the NOA is an agency of the Ministry of Information. How much talk about that 75 billion do we hear? It appears it just came to life when the NSAS protest started. And then the president mentioned it in his speech. I would have expected that all media platforms, the major ones and the minor ones, and even radio stations, are blaring information about the 75 billionaire youth fund on a daily basis. So that begins to take the attention of the likely idle hand that, okay, the government is actually listening to me, and they are ready to put, make some funds available for my use, for whatever petty trade or whatever craft I want to do. So the government needs to do a lot more enlightenment so that the people can be aware that such a fund exists and how they can go about it. All right. Judy Benson, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, looking forward to uh, speaking with you again. Thank you for having me. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.